Welcome to Shelf Life, the monthly series where I talk about games I covered about six months ago and let you know whether they stayed in my collection. And based on some viewer feedback, I'm changing things up a bit this month. I'm still going to talk about crowdfunding games that I covered six months ago, but I'm no longer going to include them in the contest portion because I don't really know if they're going to stay in my collection. I just know how much I liked them back then. So I'll still mention them in this video, but only the four games that were officially released games are going to be kind of contest eligible. With that out of the way, let's get to the games and see which of them had Shelf Life. So first in our crowdfunding corner, we have Astro Knight, which is the sci-fi kind of quicker, some more streamlined re-theme of Aeon's End. And I really enjoyed this one. They are sending me a review copy. I'm excited to play it. That said, would I have backed it myself? And the answer to this question is almost always no, because I don't back uh, too much. I get too many games as is. Uh, but yeah, this one I would not have backed. I did enjoy it. And again, I do want to play it. But I really didn't love Aeon Zen the more I played it. I kind of uh, got a little bit bored with it. And while this one does improve a lot of things, I'm not sure that it'll have uh, any more staying power for me than Aeon Zen did. I can see myself playing it for a while and then uh, giving it to a friend or something. Number two on crowdfunding from six months ago was Reckland Run. This is the solo only one, uh, also from Indie Boarding Cards, which is a sort of Mad Max theme. You're trying to uh, survive these enemies attacking around your car. And I did enjoy this one. Again, they're sending me a review copy, but uh, this is another one that if they hadn't, I probably would not have backed it just because I expect that once I played through the entire campaign, I didn't quite finish it all when I had the prototype. I just got close. I don't know if I'll play it again. There's supposed to be like unlockable stuff, though. I think like some additional kind of post campaign content that is coming in the Kickstarter. So that might uh, change the calculus here a bit. Although, you know, again, I'm not sure unless the balance gets better. I, I still feel like some of the cars and some of the items are like obviously better or worse. I'm not sure if this one would be one I would want to play like over and over again, but it's pretty fun. I'm definitely like astronaut excited to play it again. Just uh, not sure I would have dropped my own money if uh, that had been the question in front of me. So retrograde, I forgot. I don't have any footage of it. I recorded an entire playthrough and then accidentally deleted it. That was lovely. But this is a quick playing roll and write with competitive and solo play. I didn't love the solo play. I thought it was pretty fun, but I didn't think it would have a ton of staying power. Of course, I don't tend to like roll and writes anyway, so take my opinion with a grain of salt. So I would not have backed this myself, but they are sending me a copy. And I'm actually excited to play it competitively where you have the other players to race against. I think that'll be a lot more exciting than uh, the solo mode personally. And finally, the last one in our crowdfunding roundup is Kingdoms Forlorn. Uh, this is another campaign game from the same team that's doing Aeon Trespass uh, with a similar combat system. Both games are heavily inspired by Kingdom Death Monster. Would I back this one? Heck no. <laughs> and that's nothing against the game. I really enjoy this. In fact, I might enjoy it more than Aeon Trespass. It's hard to tell until that one delivers. But, oh my gosh, I don't know, people. Don't you have too many adventure campaign games? I have not been able to play through. Like, oh my gosh, I haven't finished... Uh, what has even come recently? I just got ISS Vanguard. I haven't finished uh, Osworn yet. I haven't finished Stars of Akarios yet. I haven't finished Familiar Tales yet. I haven't finished The New Descent yet. I haven't finished Trudvang Legends yet. <laughs> just so many of them in so little time. But yes, I, I, I will not back any of these campaign-based games unless I'm forced to or unless they literally blow me away. And with this one, again, it's pretty similar to Aeon Trespass, so I don't think I would need to double up personally. But once again, if they end up sending me one, I'll be happy to play it because it might not be done for a year or two. And then by then, maybe I'll have gotten through this glut. But right now, I cannot handle any more than I've got. All right, but now getting to our actual contest games. Our first matchup is Super Fantasy Brawl, which is a competitive-only uh, skirmish game, but that I created an unofficial solo variant for and a co-op variant versus Unsettled. Talking about Super Fantasy Brawl, first, I really, really enjoy this one. I think the variety of characters is great. Yes, the minis are, like, way too big, <laughs> and I don't need all of that noise in my life, but I still really enjoy this one. But uh, that, what I just said, is part of the reason why I did end up culling it, uh, even though I really still enjoy it and I did design a solo mode for it. Uh, my son and I were the main ones playing this. That tends to be, like, my main skirmish game partner. And this one uh, is just a little bit longer to set up and takes up way more space than uh, things like Exceed. And well, actually, does it take up more space than Exceed since I have like a billion decks? But <laughs> I certainly have way more content for Exceed and setting up Exceed takes like 10 seconds. We can just do it on the floor like wherever we have room. So yeah, this was just not going to get played as much uh, as the other skirmish games I already own. And with other things coming like uh, Senjutsu, the Samurai one, which I'm really excited about. I don't know. I, I just felt like uh, it was one skirmish game too far, even though I really think this is a great design. 
Meanwhile, Unsettled, the solo and cooperative game of planetary exploration, like mystery solving and stuff, I love this one. The puzzle of how you use your resources, these like cars that give you special powers, the cooperative nature of the game. I've just had an absolute blast with this one each time I've played it. I went uh, all in on the new Kickstarter, uh, so that means that I'll have like even more planets to go through, and I still haven't finished the ones I had earlier. Now, what is going to be really interesting is looking at this one again after I played ISS Vanguard a lot, because uh, they are kind of treading sort of similar ground with like sort of mystery based and discovery based uh, exploration with like dice mechanics and dice representing like your stamina. So, you know, I wonder if Unsettled will seem better or worse in comparison to ISS, especially since that's a big like campaign game and Unsettled is a one off play. Uh, but for now, this is easily one of my top games of the year. I don't expect that to change. So yeah, uh, this definitely beats out Super Fantasy Brawl by a mile. And then for something completely different, we have Letter Jam versus Libertalia Winds of Gale Crest, the uh, re-release of that one from Stonemeyer. And Letter Jam, I don't have a playthrough of this one. I just did a review, but this is another game that I've absolutely loved. It's in that cooperative deduction category that along with Paint the Roses and some other ones has been a favorite of mine recently. Uh, I played a ton with my family and kind of like uh, Code Names, another great CGE game. I don't really expect this one to go anywhere anytime soon, so it's definitely staying in my collection. Whereas Libertalia was uh, pretty good, I enjoyed my plays with it, but uh, <laughs> the big thing for this one is that Solo was fine, but felt a little bit too random for me, and Two Player, which was my other main way to play the game, I didn't like. I think the way they kind of add a sort of uh, imaginary third player to Two Player is not that great. Like, I think Solo works really well, and I think Three Plus Players works really well, but I think the game is worse at Two Players. And just for this kind of light game, I don't really see it getting to the table much for the three plus player count. So yeah, this one I did end up calling. So Letter Jam uh, definitely wins the battle between uh, letters and pirates, I guess. Getting into the contest for round one, Unsettled versus Super Fantasy Brawl. Unsettled got almost 50% of the votes. Uh, most people knew that I really, really loved that one. And people know that I like both these games a lot because Kept Them Both got 27%. Called Them Both got 14%. And Super Fantasy Brawl right behind with 13%. So uh, most people got the correct answer for this one. But as for Group 2, Libertalia versus Letter Jam, Called Them Both, incorrect, got 43% of the votes. Letter Jam by itself got 28%. That was the right answer. Libertalia by itself got 19%. And Kept Them Both only got 10%. So uh, this one definitely messed up a few more voting brackets. And this time, as you can imagine, with a lot fewer things to guess on, we had a lot of four out of four, so I'm not going to fake you out with maybe a three out of four winner. Uh, here's all our possibles. Earl Yalkison, Andrew Whipple, Jack Rudder, Joel Hoskins, Keith Frickin, Matthew Mendonca, Martin Pratt, Charlie Taft, Ryan Olson, Hannah Lukasova, and Kikia H., and uh, the Reds are our Patreon supporters, so they get double entries. Purples chose not to be entered in the contest, and uh, Earl, Andrew, and Martin are just entered once. So we're going to go over to a die. We're going to roll a d20 and re-roll on a 16 through 20 until we get a winner. Here we go! A four! Which means Jack Rudder is our winner for this month. I'm 99% sure that Jack's won at least once before. <laughs> Some people just get in my head and won't get out. But thanks to everyone who entered. Thanks to our Patreon supporters. If you haven't seen our Patreon, we have exclusive videos every month. I think about 20 or so that you can't see anywhere else at this point. But yeah, thanks to everybody. We had almost 150 entries this month, which is awesome. Uh, we'll see you next month with Shelf Life. And until then, see you at the next stop.